Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Welcome to your weekly collective reading. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. Apollo's in the other room. I'll bring him out when he wakes up. I just want to say welcome. Uh, we're going to light the candles together today because I had a lot of preparation that I was doing for all of the channeled messages, and I didn't want any of that to, uh, to have to be rushed. So thank you for waiting a couple minutes while I was getting set up. So let's talk a little bit about what we can expect today, then we'll light the candles and we'll get started together. Uh, my name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. You're tuning into a weekly collective reading. Before I even get started, I want to remind you that everybody's welcome today. All of the messages are for the entire room. That's what the word collective means. Uh, there is one portion that will be sign specific, and that's the elemental forecast where we look at fire, earth, air, and water. The rest of it is for all of you. And today you picked a really good topic, which was clearing out um, old chords and karma, really allowing you to get into a fresh new start. And I think that is a great energy. Um, you know, we just got through a retrograde period, and this is a really good time for um, clearing everything out. I mentioned that there's some significant lunar events happening next month. Um, we have two new moons. So this is really getting us ready for that. We can clear it all out. We have a, a full moon coming up this week. So this is a good time for planning, for releasing. And then after that, let's get busy and work on all of the possibilities. Um, the format for today is listed right here. We're going to look at channeled messages first after I light the candles. Then we'll do a seven day forecast from Sunday to Sunday. Then we'll do blessings and blocks, something to really embrace, something to say goodbye to. Um, then we'll look at that elemental forecast. Again, that's the only portion that is sign specific. Uh, then we turn it back to you for a little bit and you'll take a, a vote on something that you're interested in looking at. And then after the viewers and readers choice, we get into the special topic. And at the very end, I always answer a final card just in case you have something that you're really curious or worried about this week. And, um, and then we'll do that right before the uh, right after the meditation. Okay, so uh, thanks to both of my moderators today, Maria and Dakota, they'll be here to help you if you have any high level questions. Uh, let's take a moment to go ahead and light the candles. So something that I like to do occasionally, not always, <laughs> it's usually when I'm in a hurry and I'm like, all right, spirit wants me to do this with you. So today spirit wants me to light the candles for the first candle that I'm going to light. I'll bring it over here. I usually connect with source energy. So you could call that God, uh, the divine, whatever your connection to spirit is. Uh, but we'll also just set an intention to really open up to the highest messages coming through. So let's light the candle, something you should always do if you're going to be working with um, tarot or doing any sort of spiritual practice, it helps. So we'll do that and then we'll get to work. All right. So we'll start first with this big candle here. And this is the one that I'm going to use to uh, connect us to spirit. So. What I'd like you to do right now is to just close your eyes for a second. Imagine that there is a beautiful circle of white light around you or a spotlight shining down on you or a ray of sunshine. And uh, let's just call in together. Um, please, divine source uh, that created us, that connects us, come through today and allow for the highest messages to be a part of today's reading and the highest messages only. Thank you so much. I always work with four ascended masters, or in my case, I like to work with archangels. So be, we'll be working with Michael, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael. Um, so I'll be asking for protection and connection with those um, four archangels. So it may be a little harder to hear me. I'll try to project, but you can um, put your own prayer and intention to whatever your, um, your sort of like, you know, your higher, higher sort of connections are while I'm doing this as well. You don't have to just work with the angels that I'm calling in. All right, let me do this. All right. First of all, thank you to the Archangels for being present. Even when I don't know you're here, I appreciate your guidance. I'm going to call on Archangel Michael first for protection today. Thank you for keeping this space safe and for allowing us to connect without um, fear or anything of that nature. Archangel Raphael, allow for healing energy to be a part of today's reading. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your assistance. Archangel Gabriel. Thank you for allowing me to be a clear channel and also for bringing forth messages that deserve uh, proper attention today. And Archangel Uriel, thank you for keeping things in order, for showing us how to love one another, uh, love one another and love ourselves. Thank you so much on that. All right, let me get a, a glass for water and then we're gonna get started. And again, I'm just gonna throw up the schedule while I'm doing this so you know what's coming through. So let's get into the channeled messages here. And again, channeled messages come through in a combination of ways for me. Um, 
First and foremost, they come through dreams. I do a lot of work as an intuitive through dream interpretation. And they also come through the research that I do and the meditation that I do when I first come here each and every morning to kind of work with all of you. All right, so let me just get the uh, slideshow set up and then we'll get started. And there we go. All right, and okay, hopefully you can see that nicely. So um, today, what I really want to be focusing on, we have a, a single uh, totem, which is the mountain, and the rest of these are going to be your channeled messages. Uh, I got a lot of information about self-confidence and unrequited love, um, just being able to pace your energy and make smart and intelligent decisions about that, um, some chakra val balancing, which we'll talk about, and then also the importance of being hands-on. Let's start with the mountain, which was the first thing. Um, so mountains to me indicate so many different symbols and so many different messages. Um, first and foremost, time and patience. They're, in technical terms, they're kind of the result of plate tectonics. And I'll use my hands because I didn't. I'll, one of the reasons I don't use images is because of copyright protection. So I have to kind of like just use images and emojis instead. Um, so in uh, geology, you can, there's different types of ways that plates can move. They can jut up against each other. One can go underneath this way, and they can also slide back and forth. So when they kind of collide like this, this is what creates a mountain. One plate still kind of goes underneath a bit, but um, things like the Himalayans and things like that, you can kind of see where the plates have jutted up. This sort of work, geologically speaking, takes millions of years to form. They're beautiful, and they last for millions of years as well, but it's basically slow and steady. A mountain is not built uh, overnight. It takes a long time for that to be sort of created even in nature. So time, heat, pressure, and movement create these majestic things that we see all around us. Uh, even something that beautiful in nature takes time. So perseverance is the main piece here. And I really like this particular card, which comes from the Lightseer's deck, because sometimes it reminds us that when we see a mountain as a symbol, we could also be on the sort of trip down. It's kind of like when you cycle on a bike really hard trying to get to the top of the hill and uh, you enjoy it and all of a sudden you get this sort of free ride on the way down. You, you get to glide a little bit. So if you find yourself kind of at that beginning phase of the journey where you're pushing, remember that you don't have to push forever. There are points where it gets a little bit easier and there are other points where you can just glide. So keep pushing, persevere for sure here. Um, I think that the other thing here is to remember that, you know, Sometimes we look at success with other people and you just wish it would happen for you really, really quickly. Success can be any number of things. Some people look at partnerships, wish that they were, you know, we have Valentine's Day coming up here tomorrow, right? Uh, so many of us are comparing ourselves to other people and thinking, well, why isn't my relationship looking like that? Why don't I have a relationship? Am I enough if I don't have one? Um, and so those are all natural things. But remember that what you're seeing it's kind of like marketing. A lot of those people do a lot of work and perseverance to give off the appearance of it being easy, but it's not easy. So everything takes work and you're no more or less depending on, you know that by watching me because I don't center all readings on love. I think that, that um, you're missing some of the big pieces of your life and soul development if you're only focusing on the other person. So this mountain here is showing your individual strength, right? Um, and Keep pushing towards your goals because sooner or later you will make it to that top of the hill and then it's going to get a little easier like we see in this Ten of Wands, okay? Perseverance is really important. In my dreams, I saw myself at the top of a mountain. I got a little nervous because I was there and it was really high. So sometimes we get freaked out by our own success, by something happening after you've been used to not winning or not getting or not achieving. So when that happens to you, remind yourself of how hard you worked to get where you were and that it is worth the climb, and that you do deserve it, okay? Firm foundations. Hey, Apollo, welcome. Um, firm foundations are also important here. So this is not just about like architecture or mountains. It's also about friendships and core relationships. I put it um, the bottom. Well, I think I have it on another slide here, but um, this is important with all things in your life, whether it is a love relationship or a business sort of relationship. If you don't have that firm foundation there, then uh, things are kind of like a house of cards and they just fall apart. So uh, really focus on the core relationships that matter to you this month. Those are the things that hold you up when it's like a stormy day, right? So um, that's gonna be also important. And if you're not feeling that support, that firm foundation, then um, just there's a certain angle that a mountain or a hill has to have 
Uh, otherwise, it kind of crumbles. Same sort of thing as in the in relationships. If you don't have all the right components, things tend to fall apart a little bit. So really focus on making sure that you're receiving what you're giving here. This is all kind of nicely going into the five of pentacles here, the unrequited love message that came through for me, for you. Um, so the answer to the five of pentacles is actually the six of pentacles, which is balance um, and not feeling like you have to give all to, uh, it's, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You don't have to give everything to everyone. The reason I chose this particular card here is that you can see um, like right in the background, there's a key. I'll use my mouse to show. There's a key right by the door. And the reminder here is that you always have the key to your own happiness. You always have the key to get out of a situation that you don't want to be in. And uh, sometimes when we're younger, or it can even happen as an adult, someone kind of chips away at our confidence and we feel like the power to decide, the power to move is somehow taken away. So I'm here today to remind you that you're more than enough. Um, if someone in your life does not see your value, then as I put in the title of this slide, you deserve better. Something better awaits you. I was shown this dance in my uh, dreams last night and it just felt like one person was waiting for another, but that they were either not going to show up or it was going to be disappointing. And I, I inferred from that that there was a, an unrequited sort of energy. One party was a lot more engaged and a lot more committed than the other party was. So uh, remember that the other person in your life is just as lucky to have you as you are to have them. And if they don't want you, then you can do better for sure. And this starts with self-worth. So if there's something in your life where you don't feel like you deserve that yet, then work on feeling worthy. That's, that's the most important thing. It's going to affect all facets of your life from how much you make to how much people kind of like take advantage of you um, to on the more positive side, how many rewards you get, like what kind of frequency of people you're bringing in if they're they're kind of really kind and open, et cetera. So love yourself, demand that sort of love from others as well, and you'll be surprised uh, by what comes through. As I said in the previous examples, this self-love and this unrequited love, it, it isn't just romantic. Sometimes we want the love of a parent. Sometimes we want the approval of a boss or a teacher. Sometimes we want popularity or fame. Um, if it's not coming, if it isn't happening the way you want it to, sometimes it's internal. Sometimes you're playing to the wrong audience. So find a different sort of team, a different sort of tribe, a different group, and um, really try to find a place where that energy is reciprocated. And I think this is such a great message to be coming right on the heels of Valentine's Day. Love and value yourself. I'll probably do an impromptu this week since I'm reading tomorrow for... Um, I think it's Virgo. Um, I, I may not do it on Valentine's Day, but I'll do something this week about self-love. So keep, uh, keep those notifications um, <laughs> and uh, subscriptions uh, enabled so that you can see that. So let's go on to the next slide here. I saw the, an engine being revved up, but it felt like the engine itself could overheat. And it reminded me a lot of the Nine of Cups. Nine of Cups can be sometimes, um, it's like a, almost a bipolar energy, manic highs and really kind of crazy lows. Uh, when it's in its upright position, it's about the sunny side of the street, looking at the positive. So I really like it. If the card gets reversed, though. One really great thing can sometimes throw you into this crazy phase or one really negative thing can take you too far, too low. So we really want to try to remember it's like the like hills and mountains. There's going to be peaks and valleys. And we don't want to try to only exist in the peak or only exist in the valley. The, the really important work and ostensibly the, the fun part comes in the ascension and that sort of gliding phase. Um, getting right at the top is anticlimactic. Um, and sometimes being at the, the bottom, it's just sort of like if you can shift it around and think of it like, well, I'm finished with this. I'm going to get started on this. Uh, that 10 of wands that I showed earlier was kind of like that. It can be ends or beginnings. Um, so try not to be overwhelmed. Try to find the middle ground. And I think that's going to help you quite a bit. And uh, I think this might be the final slide. Let me just double check. Um, no, there's one after this. So I was also shown colors. I don't always receive colors, but this was a really kind of cool energy. Uh, so I was shown two primary colors, which of course relate to our chakras. Um, one is the root, the red chakra. So that's going to be right at the base of your spine. It represents the, the sort of like bottom or foundation of the mountain, which is why I was talking about that so much earlier. I was also shown the throat, the, the blue chakra. So you put the two together and it's the color of this slide, which is magenta or purple. 
um, and that's your crown. So this month, the key to connecting to source is making sure that you're really grounded, that you're balanced, that you're not working from a place of fear. So that's your root chakra. And then really making sure that you speak authentically, that you find your voice, that you express yourself in a way that is true to you. And if anyone in your life told you to quiet down, told you that your voice wasn't worthy, said that you your expression wasn't what they wanted to see, uh, and it could be any kind of expression, it could be Again, communication, it could be expressing who you love, uh, what you believe in, whatever it is. That's you. You get to decide. You get to be yourself. And the, the more you do that, uh, the more you're connected to source. So kind of cool that they were showing me primary and secondary colors, not something that I normally receive in, in messages, but I really like that. And uh, the final piece is to really be hands on. Roll up your sleeve. Things like learning education, even just management in general is going to be um, aided or benefited or pushed into the positive by making sure that you're in the mix, that you're part of this. So you have some really powerful messages that came through, and that's part of the reason I had to get all of these slides and try to get everything really, really concise. Um, so hopefully that helped you. And uh, we're going to remember this stuff. And as we get into the forecast here in just a few minutes, we're going to try to connect some of those as well. Um, so the next piece that we're going to look at is a seven day forecast and I have two new decks today. I'm so excited. Um, these are on my website. I did update it so that uh, you can see them. Both of these are independent. Um, I think they're Etsy artists, so or they were um, kickstart artists. So I, I like that they're these are kind of indie. So I had a post a few a few days ago, like last week, um, asking for recommendations. And I have two that uh, came through that I really liked. Um, a lot of people mentioned this one, so this might hurt. Crazy title, but I really like the images in it. And, um, and then Star Seeker, I just used this one the other day, and they're really beautiful. So um, this is This Might Hurt. Really cool, um, colorful images. I like it. And then we have um, the Star Seeker here, which uh, kind of is like the fountain tarot meets, um, I don't know, maybe like field tarot. It's a combination of those two. So kind of like flat images, but a little bit of dimensionality to it as well. So I really like these. Good suggestions. Keep them coming on that thread. Um, and I'll continue to kind of look at some new ones. I'm almost uncertain which one I want to use first. Um, I think I want to use this for the main spread because it's really colorful. And um, I think that uh, I haven't used it for the main spread before. So what I'm going to do for the seven day forecast is use this one. So this is the Star Seeker one. All right. So let me just get my camera focused here. And we're going to look at the next seven days. Um, this is going to be from Sunday to Sunday. All right. So let's take a look at what's coming through. Hope everybody's doing well, by the way. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at what's coming through here. So we're going to start with the message for today. I know that those of you that might be in Australia or China or parts of, yeah, basically parts of the world where it's maybe 15 hours ahead. This may already be tomorrow. So what we'll be looking at if you're already in tomorrow is just anything that you can kind of make sure that you've wrapped up. And I still think this message is important. But for everyone else, this is for Sunday for when I'm going live. Um, we have the, the hermit card. This is a beautiful hermit card. Kind of looks like a wizard, doesn't it? Uh, and it really is because if you think of the number on this, it's number nine, right? So um, it's basically going through all of the energy of uh, the fool, the magician, the emperor, the empress, all of that, etc. So it would have the lessons of being magical. Um, the hermit is dis all about discovering the light within. So for some of you, there may be this feeling of questioning. Am I ready? Have I learned enough? Is the time right right now? And the answer with this is yes. Um, when the hermit card is reversed, it actually is saying to go outward, not inward. It's time to move on. It's time to trust yourself. 
And for some of us, it's try, uh, trying to say like, your North Star is going to be different from everyone else. So uh, basically just embrace whatever it is that's calling to you. Okay. Um, so you've got the magic to make this work. You are ready. And uh, if not now, then when? What is it that's holding you back? So I really like this coming out of your shell. This can also mean some of you might just be deciding to spend some time with friends or family today. Here in the United States, a lot of people are watching a sporting event later today. So thank you for taking some time out this morning before that begins. That's fine. And that this would absolutely be a part of this sort of energy, which is coming out of your shell. So whether it's with a little small group or whatever, or if you're just deciding to get out in the world and explore a little bit, all of that is supported by Hermit Reverse. So um, get out and express yourself, explore. And yes, if there's something you've been holding on to, much like Empress Reversed as well, this can just be an encouragement for you to step in to the next thing. Okay, so beautiful message for Sunday. I'm going to put this up here so we can focus on the week and uh, look at the messages here. All right, so as we look at Monday, it feels like you start to get more comfortable in who you are and what you want to do. We have the Three of Cups coming through here for Monday. Let's look a little closer at this card. Um, so Three of Cups in and of itself is a great card. It's about um, really celebrating every small little, you know, not just adventure, but like part of your journey. So a lot of times we forget how hard we've worked to just achieve, you know, small things. So maybe, uh, you know, we, we focus sometimes on anniversaries too much. I think you should look at the little things like you know, I've been doing this for, you know, maybe maybe you've been doing something for a year or two or whatever, but look at where you're at. Look at where you've, how much you've accomplished kind of internally. It doesn't have to fit on a calendar to be something to celebrate. Even in a given day, there might be something worth celebrating. Just being able to get up, have food on the table, um, being able to use your mind, use your words. There's a lot of people right now on the planet that are going through things physically, mentally, that don't allow them to have that same sort of independence. So celebrate the little victories as well as the big vic victories. Um, this is also about coming together. So the first card that we pulled here for today is really about coming out of your shell. And that's preparing you for what Monday has in store for you, which is collaboration, community, possibly someone who's interested in, you know, spending some time with you. Or uh, if you are looking at trying to talk to someone, Monday's a great energy for that. The only thing that you want to avoid with Three of Cups sometimes are, are things like peer pressure, um, gossip, and also feeling like there's a, if there's a click, you remember what I was talking about earlier, if someone doesn't want you in their sort of energy or their group, it probably is a form of protection on some level. You can do a lot better. And that's what that card is showing you. But overall, I think you're getting off to a great start this week with the Three of Cups, a good time to work with people, a good time to share thoughts, ideas and projects with others. Um, so keep up what, what this sort of momentum is that we're building so far. Uh, we see productivity coming in as we go into Tuesday. So Tuesday, um, Nine of Pentacles is showing me that even though you can do everything on your own, it doesn't mean that you have to do it all on your own. Let's pull the card up a little bit closer. So we have Nine of Pentacles, which shows that, hey, I've worked really hard to prove that I am capable, I am independent, I really like my autonomy. Uh, but what that means sometimes is when someone has some criticism, advice, or information, you may sort of tune it out or push them away prematurely. So Nine of Pentacles is saying, yes, you can do all of this stuff, but someone may be able to make it even better. There is room for improvement with the Nine of Pentacles. Um, you can always get to that Ten of Pentacles. And what is the difference between Nine and Ten? Ten is a lot of people. You would see friends, family, uh, loved ones in that Ten of Pentacles. Uh, so I think the next natural phase for you is finish what you started and then start to solicit some feedback, start to open up to what others are doing. Take a look around you because the missing piece, the magic sort of connection, special sauce, if you will, is going to be sharing it with someone else. Uh, and for those of you that are in the artistic world, you know that there's a special time and place for that. Usually comes when you feel like you're pretty solid with it. Um, so in writing, you know, maybe you've completed your first draft. But when you kind of get to a place where you trust yourself and you trust who you're working with, you may be able to show them something sooner and they can save you a lot of trouble. Let's say you go down a path where you believe your way is the only way and you, you kind of miss some things that may help other people or there might be a couple of loopholes. The sooner you can fix that, the, the again, the firmer the foundation and the faster you can get to that that easy coasting space. So this is a reminder to 
know when to work by yourself and know when to bring in some other people so that you're not sort of spinning your wheels. Really good day for money, really good day for negotiations. If you're trying to seal a deal, sign a contract, sell something, buy something, it's a pretty good day to do it. So Tuesday is looking solid for business. Monday is looking really good for um, ent uh, entertainment and kind of like communication overall. These two can go hand in hand. You may decide, again, for business, you may decide to meet casually with someone the day before, prep them for a meeting, and then you actually do the, the meeting on Tuesday. Uh, if you are dating someone or um, just starting something, this is the casual beginning. This is you sitting at the table trying to hammer out the details. It still works in a relationship too, talking about what's important, what you're looking for, etc. Okay. And then we see some really great work done on Wednesday. And there is a nice connection. This is other people wanting to come in, allowing them to come in, and then possibly doing some revision. So let's take a look at this card uh, up close. It's upright. What I really like about this one is, uh, I kind of like to think that that is the hermit's lantern right by him. He's taking the lessons, uh, coming out of his shell, listening to what people are saying, and then getting work done. This card uh, is associated with education, with training, with um, anything that you basically want to invest time and energy into, you're going to see a really nice return on it. Cleaning your house, fixing the car. It's a busy card, but it's one where you kind of get lost and you, you look at the clock and you think, wow, how did like three hours or five hours go by? Anybody that's really been quote unquote in the flow, um, and you know what I'm talking about if you've been really sort of like, if you're yeah, again, cons constructing something, cleaning something, building something, reading something, watching something. All of those things, sometimes you just get engrossed in it and then uh, you're really having fun or you're really feeling this sense of fulfillment and then all of a sudden, wow, it's, it's either finished or time has passed. So time management would be the only thing that I would say could get away from you on Wednesday, but I see it as a very productive day. You actually have a really nice uh, coupling here when we're looking at the nine and eight of pentacles. So a lot of good energy around resources and a lot of work getting done okay so really really great energy overall and i like what i'm seeing there moving along to thursday now we start to see some movement and for some of you this is the time when you're gonna basically get out of your um your sort of office or your house or you may be needing to talk to someone that's from another office or in another space long distance connections coming through with this page of swords uh, and part of the challenge for you is maintaining the integrity of the of the message so if you are the person that is delivering a message you want to make sure that the person that you hand off that baton to is clear and also going to is going to follow through and follow up in the way that's expected so do a little bit of checkup if that's the case um, sometimes it's better maybe for you to deliver it personally because we talked about hands-on approach I normally am not a big fan of micromanaging, but I think sometimes there's the personal touch and that's what's coming through here on Thursday. Uh, you may also receive some good news. Based on the, the connections of cards this week, we're seeing almost exclusively positive cards. So why don't we just imagine that Thursday is gonna be some really good news. So prep yourself for giving and receiving important messages, uh, for getting something positive coming your way, and also for getting things done. Um, both pages and nights are exciting cards to me because it, they're not stagnant. You know, kings and queens sometimes are a little stuck, but the pages really get the work done. And uh, if you are the person that's in the middle, I feel like you're gonna have a great capacity right now to, to be that in-between person, to get the messages out there. And uh, people may, in the future, tap on you for more of that sort of stuff. So for those of you that happen to be an assistant or maybe you work in PR or marketing, or again, you're just a family member that everyone seems to go through, or go to when something is wrong, you're really setting yourself up for success here and more of the same. So try to manage all of that. All right, as we go to the last day of the week, uh, there's a little bit of a reveal that's happening here. We have the moon in reverse, which basically brings a few messages here, but let's look at the upright card. Normally with the moon card, this is one of really connecting to your, your not, just, not just your intuition, but your instincts. Uh, missing on this card are the two, you know, like the dog and the wolf. So that's the only thing that I would take issue with with, on, with this card. But instead, we have the two trees um, and we have mountains. So I'm happy because it really brings into connection everything that we talked about. So with this, don't be afraid. The reversal of the moon card. Don't be afraid of who you are. Don't be afraid to ask a question. 
uh, especially an important question. If you are feeling the emotion of fear, talk about what makes you afraid um, so that you can kind of educate yourself. Education is usually one of the key tools that I would use to transmute the sort of negative aspects of the moon card. But the positive aspects are you have good instincts, you have a lot of creativity, and you also know when to deviate from the norm. Again, missing from the card is the domesticated dog versus the wild wolf. And what that means is sometimes we have to understand when to go away from the status quo. So uh, the, the dog follows orders sometimes, depends on the dog, but the wolf is going to follow its heart and it's gonna follow its own path. So maybe you have a little bit of wolf energy coming through for you on Friday where you're gonna to have to deviate a bit, okay? And you're gonna trust the instincts. And it served the wolf well, it's been around for a long time. And it's not as um, dependent upon others as the dog would be, okay? So that's what I'm really getting from that. And um, we see the, it's very hard to kind of see it on this card, but the water in the front here. So the water can represent our, our deep hopes, dreams, desires. And this is just kind of asking you to get real with who you are and what you want because it has a way of coming out sooner or later, okay? Let's go ahead now and move along to the, the next weekend here. We have a couple of beautiful cards here. Um, we have the Eight of Swords in reverse, which is actually a reveal coming through, and that's next Saturday. So let's look at this card first. Um, so the big reveal moment here. Someone is actually giving you the tools or uh, giving you the capacity to get out of something. So when I was showing that card in the slides earlier, where we saw the five of pentacles and it had a key against the door and the person kind of sitting there not using the key, the, to me, the eight of swords is also a curious card because it shows um, the ability to get out of a cage, a prison, a, a self-imposed sort of block. But sometimes we... We feel comfortable in the block and it's sort of like, no, it's safer here. If I get out there and I have to sort of fend for myself, then I also have to take the heat. I have to take the accountability. This could represent you. It could represent someone that you love in your life that's just not yet ready to go the next step for their independence, for what's better for them. If it's you, just don't be afraid. And if something's been shown to you, as it is often the case when this card is reversed, then Take it as a blessing, even if it's something that you don't want to see, right? I think that's uh, super important here. The good news is everything in the seven-day forecast is bringing you up to the energy of the sun. The card is reversed, but much like four of wands, solar energy is something that we really want to embrace. It's a good, it's a good card to come through. Um, as an aspect of your personality, this is really encouraging you to to sort of like go into your, your ego a bit and to have fun and to be charismatic, to just truly embrace you. And it can also be sort of a, a rebirth or a birthing energy as well. So if you find yourself uh, just really ready to kick off something new, then this is a, a great time to do it. And if we look quickly at the table, it's, it feels like everything that we've been looking at brings you into that energy. This one, because basically, uh, the hermit holds the, the star right there in its lantern. And the star, our sun is a star too. So this whole journey of the week is allowing you to shine, right? And some of the lessons that we see, so Sunday coming out of your shell, Monday working with others, uh, Tuesday opening up to criticism and, and engagement from some of that cooperation, Wednesday getting the work done and really putting things to practice, Thursday uh, really being a, a communicator, listening as well as communicating. Friday, not being afraid, trusting instincts. All of those things bring out the true you. You may be surprised by what you see. Others may be surprised as well. Again, surprise can be a good element. So let's kind of lean into that surprise and see where it takes you, okay? So there you go. Um, so we just got through that seven day forecast and I really like what I see so far. Let's go ahead now and uh, I'm just gonna arrange these so I have a little bit more room on the table. And then we're going to look at the blessings and the blocks next. Blessings and the blocks, again, pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna be looking at things that you can really embrace and some other things that you may want to step away from. All right, so I got everything set up here. Um, so we're gonna start first with uh, the blessing. Again, something that's fun, something that's worth your time and energy. And let's see what the messages are here. I'm gonna pull both at once just so that we can get them uh, arranged here. Blessing, got that 10 of pentacles, which fits nicely with the nine of pentacles. And then we're gonna take a look at the block. 
Four of Swords. All right, so let's look at these up close. So for the blessing, we have uh, Ten of Pentacles. Like I said, there's always room for some improvement with the Nine of Pentacles. Yes, it's good to do things independently, but there is a larger audience that's waiting for you. And that's what the Ten of Pentacles is saying. So um, let's look at this Ten of Pentacles here. It can be so many different things. So the blessing this week could be the support from family. We get family clear at the center of this particular um, illustration. This also is a good card for financial support. So for those of you that might be looking for um, an approval on a loan for selling or buying something, again, we see the ability to really bring that into focus. Um, so there are people around you that are ready to invest. All of this is kind of um, dependent upon that one card that I had in spirit, which was um, the Five of Pentacles. Do you believe in what other people believe in and what they see in you? And they see value. So the blessing is that the value exists. Even before I get to the block, one spirit block that came through could be, but I don't know if I am. It's the imposter syndrome, right? Am I good enough? Uh, what if they find out that I'm not truly what they think? Okay. But look at all the love in this card. There, you are, you are what, what other people think in the positive light anyway. And you're probably more than that. When you start to allow yourself to surprise people, as we saw with this, the element of surprise, then all of a sudden they're going to just keep wanting more, like more where that came from, please. Okay, so really beautiful energy here. So I feel like there are untapped resources. There is uh, also untapped support. And there's a lot of potential for you. You just have to lean into it and believe it. As we look at what your block could be, we have the Four of Swords. This is really interesting. Um, normally, Four of Swords, you would see an image of someone sleeping, and it can indicate a lack of movement. So for this one, I get what the artist was going after. We kind of have wind chimes here, and there's no movement. There's no wind, right? So they're just sitting there silent. So whether or not you have air as one of your placements, the, th the throat is going to be what's going to get you past the block. So if you wait for someone else to apologize, talk to you, um, ask you out on a date, uh, whatever, <laughs> you're going to be waiting a while. So don't wait. Talk. Go. Find some, or find a group where people are more communicative. There may be one person or one thing in your life where this is affirming that there's going to be silence, crickets, basically. But you don't have to deal with... If, if, listen, again, if someone in your life doesn't return your calls, doesn't answer your emails, or you have to always initiate connections with them, it's a pretty clear sign that they're not invested. And remember what I said earlier, you're worth more than that, okay? So you're, for, for clearing some of the karmic energy, I, one of my pieces of advice would be to not invest in something that's an empty investment. That would be like a credit card with 100% APR, like you're, you're paying way more than you ever should. It's not worth it. You're, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't take out a loan where the, the rate was that high, where you were just guaranteed to lose money. So don't put energy into a relationship where it's crickets. And if you're waiting for something, use your voice. Use the element of air. Action or communication it has to happen to break the block this week. But it's very easy to break the block, okay? Some of you may just be afraid of making some noise. Again, it's wind chimes, so they're going to they're gonna make some noise. But they are musical. So... Listen, your noise is someone else's music. Uh, your parents can attest to that, and you can attest to that if you have kids. Sometimes you just don't vibe with what they like. So you're not going to make everyone happy, but you have to use your, your voice and find your, find your own sort of uh, your tribe if you need to. Okay? So just checking in where we're at right now. We looked at the channeled messages, the seven-day forecast, blessings, and blocks. blocks rather. Now we're going to take a look at the elemental forecast. I love this deck so much that I'm just going to stick with this deck. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, leave what we've got out here. And then we're going to just use that second deck for the um, primary reading. But I really like the images so far. So let's just push these cards up here. And then we're going to look at um, the elements. And the elements are, again, fire, earth, air, and water. And let me just go ahead and pull the cards out, and then we're going to go through each and every one, okay? All right, so for fire, don't worry, I'll, I'll remind you what each sign is in a second here. Fire, earth, air, and water, all looking really good this week. All right, let's start first with fire. 
This is going to be my uh, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius out there. So we have the Queen of Pentacles. Hello, what a great card to come through for you this week. Um, so this Queen of Pentacles, I'll take the graphic off for just a second. If we go really close, look at all the fruitful, bountiful energy here. We have the rabbit, which is abundance. Um, we have all the butterflies there. The interesting thing with her is that she seems a bit overwhelmed. So sometimes, like I said, when you start to achieve what you've been looking for, there's that feeling of, oh my gosh, how can I keep up with this? Or again, the imposter syndrome could be coming in for some of you uh, in Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. And I would remind you that you've worked really hard for this moment in time. So just trust that you're going to be able to grow and uh, continue to see movement with this because that little rabbit in the corner is saying, this is not it. There's more to come. So the next seven days, I see you being busy. I see you being able to pull in more abundance. And I also see that you're going to have to work with stress management. It could just feel a little bit like, how am I going to do all of this, right? But you're going to be okay. So really good week for all of my fire signs out there. Focus on looking at your finances, um, putting your time and energy into work, looking at house and home because Queen of Pentacles rules house and home. And for those of you that are stri uh, striving or trying to birth something, either literally or figuratively, this is a really good time for that genesis to happen. So for projects and relationships, you might see a lot of growth. Um, and if you are trying to get pregnant or if you're trying to get something started, this is a really good time to get the momentum going in that area. Okay, I like that. Take care of yourself. Uh, so especially this week, like I know it's, it's uh, Valentine's Day, but that should just be, it should be called Unconditional Love Day. Wouldn't it be a lot easier to deal with it rather than all this focus on couples and chocolates and earrings and jewelry and rom romantic comedies and all of that? What if we were just focusing on, do you love and accept yourself? <laughs> it's not easy to sell, and that's why that uh, Hallmark isn't allowing that, but that's what it really should be, is just Heart Chakra Day or Unconditional Love Day, because that's really what the focus is. So your sign in particular needs to nurture itself, um, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. All right, so those are the messages for fire. Let's move along to Earth, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. So you, you've got some good boss energy coming through here. We have the Chariot. The chariot isn't necessarily the ultimate boss, but it is really good at bringing things into order. So if stuff has been kind of in disar disarray lately, right, um, and you just feel like, how am I going to get it all together? This is a good day to sort of clean out the figurative closet, whether it's stuff that you need to talk about with a person or literally you're looking around and thinking, I need to clean uh, and get, get organized. All of these things are supported. The chariot is also reminding you of the importance of trying to find common ground. One thing that I'm noticing on this one, it's really subtle, but if you look at the moons there, we see both full moons and crescent moons. We see a few. This could indicate like a, th a four to five month uh, sort of process here because I see four moons here and then there's one over here. So the next quarter year, even though we're kind of fast forwarding a bit here for Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn, you're looking at a theme of control, organization, and also making sure that you can maybe bring people, corral people into the same sort of direction. Leadership isn't just about telling them what to do. It's also about inspiring them to, um, to go in the same direction here. So when I look at the two horses on the chariot, I'm always reminded of the importance that those horses have to be thinking, working, and um, cooperating in the same sort of time, the same meter. Otherwise, if one's going too fast or one's going in the other direction, the chariot's not going to go anywhere. It's going to topple. So how's your core partnership looking? How are your core relationships looking? Um, how are you doing about just controlling and organizing your life? Earth signs, you, you don't have a problem with doing this anyway, but just get grounded and really focus on self-control and your own sort of like organization. Uh, and that's going to help. I feel like Virgo is going to love that. Capricorn will excel as well. Taurus out there, you may be stubborn of what I'm saying, but it's going to help you. So just focus on organization and everything's going to come together. You'll be thanking me later because when things get really busy, you're not going to have to worry about what to do because you'll have like a list of everything. Or you're not going to worry, did I miss something because you finished it all. So this is really uh, a chance for you to get everything cleaned up, cleared up. And if you are given a chance to lead, take it. You're going to do a great job at it. Okay. Um, I just want you to believe in yourself a little bit more. You've got support. The, the two horses in there kind of uh, symbolize other people that are there to give you assistance, okay? So let's move on to air. This is also really interesting because we talked about the energy of the Four of Swords, the block for this week. Um, 
being kind of uh, muted or transmuted by air. And we actually see that here. So the message for air is the three of wands. Let me just zoom in on this one a, a little bit. This is a beautiful card here. Um, so we actually see someone in a boat. Yeah, in a boat. Um, what I love about this, you know I love a three of wands where the person isn't waiting up on the shore. They know what's coming and they're meeting it there. They're actually getting ahead of it. So for all of my fellow air signs out there, use your bird's eye view, your intuition and your communication skills to open up a channel that maybe didn't even exist. Get, get way ahead of someone. We have visionaries this week in the air signs and it's gonna help you out. This, almost immediately when you embark upon something that you feel passionate about, you're gonna see movement. Very, very powerful energy for um, all the air signs this week. You're gonna make great headway. And the key thing here is even if you think it should be coming to you, do a couple of steps towards that direction and it will happen a little faster and uh, you'll be surprised. All right, so great energy for uh, Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. All right, now let's focus on the water signs out there. So Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Uh, also control energy, very similar to what I was looking at for what, Earth. Um, so we have the Emperor card in reverse. So let's just pull it up right for a second. And Emperor card. Knowing uh, what you want to do, using your voice, for you especially as we're talking about the throat chakra, speaking and saying what you need to, to say and saying it with authority, that's all going to be important. But with this card in reverse, you could have someone in your life that tends to come in and make you feel like your leadership skills are lacking or that you're not good enough. This is also feeding into some of the Five of Pentacles energy. So just know how and when to speak up and do it. Try not to micromanage. I said that it would be good to be hands-on. What you want to avoid, however, is taking away people's ability to prove their potential and also to, to sort of like step into taking on more res responsibility. So whenever I get a, a really strong leadership card like this, it's telling me that you can absolutely lead the charge and take, take ownership and control over your life. Do that. When it comes to people in your life that might be making mistakes, may not be listening to you, may be sort of like <laughs> just frustrating you a little bit. This is saying, you know what, there's only so much you can control and you're going to let some people experience lessons on their own. And if they need to come to you, they'll come to you. Otherwise, you're just going to sort of say, not here, not today. I've got a lot of other things that I need to be focusing on. OK, uh, but overall, strong leadership working on um, not being too stubborn. That's the only thing that I would say with this one is trying to stay open-minded and uh, otherwise great energy coming through, okay? So quickly looking at them one more time here. I really like what we're seeing here for, um, for the fire signs out there. We're seeing the ability to bring in abundance and not to get overwhelmed with your leadership skills, okay? So trust that you're gonna be able to do what you need to do um, and not get in your own headspace. As we looked at earth signs, uh, we have that sort of middle management and organizational energy that you're actually really well suited to do. So just step in and trust that the momentum is going to follow. And then again, as we're looking at air signs, really powerful manifestation capability this month, getting one step ahead and seeing things happen quickly. And finally, for our water signs, um, people may be coming to you. It could be a little overwhelming for some of you because it's a lot of attention. So just trust that you've done everything you need to do in order to kind of open up that opportunity. All right. So let's go ahead now and uh, move into the next piece, which is a viewer's choice before we go into the reading itself here. So for the viewer's choice, let me just grab my keyboard here. Um, I'm going to look at a few things that I think would be worth digging deeper into. So those of you that are watching on computer or mobile device, you should be able to vote for the rest of you. Um, this may take uh, you just have to lean on the other people. <laughs> all right, so let's see here. Um, so as I'm looking at all the cards in front of me, uh, the things that kind of really interest me, uh, I'm going to focus more on the sort of seven-day part of this. Okay, so the moon card here when I was looking at the end of the week. So I want to uh, really look at instinct, knowing uh, when to follow your instinct. That would be the first thing. The next thing is um, I'm really uh, kind of heartened by the energy of the Ten of Pentacles. So I would 
want to be curious about uh, tapping into resources, tapping into unknown, uh, I, we'll just put resources, that'll be enough, tapping into resources. And as I'm kind of looking at these two, there's a lot of leadership, actually, all of these, when I looked at the elements this week, were really about kind of like leadership and following, uh, not following, but kind of like taking the lead. So uh, I would say here, leadership advice. So I'm going to let you guys look at those. And while you're voting on that, I'm going to take a moment here to decide on one more. Uh, so let's see here. Okay, I want to look at the energy of the hermit. Um, so the hermit is amazing and it helps us discover, but I saw that there was a momentary pause with the hermit. So how can we go from hermit to star? What's the message of going from hermit to star? To really kind of just be yourself, to trust that the timing is right. Four of Pentacles. Okay, so this is also a very similar energy to what I was just talking about, which is saying, okay, uh, when is it going to be enough? When, like, sometimes we hold on to something long after we need to be holding on to it. So Four of Pentacles here. Um, if we look at a traditional illustration, the, the coin is right over the heart. And there's usually a message internally of one of these things, which is, if I let this go, will I be able to sustain? Is this actually as good as it gets? I feel like I have to give way more because pain equals gain. If I'm constantly proving that I'm like a martyr, then people will see me as better than. The truth is, uh, if you're holding on to something too long, if you're so used to sort of being second or third, uh, you're actually just not allowing yourself to, to truly shine here. So this is about overcoming limits. And I feel like fearing rejection and fearing the unknown, it's just giving power to fear. So invest one or two more sort of uh, energetic coins here and think, well, at least I'll break even, or at least this is worth the time and energy. I won't have a regret. And then surprise yourself as you go through this and think, wow, this wasn't as hard as I thought. And I bet I can actually overcome this and get more than I thought. So it's really just about not limiting your expectations. We're so used sometimes to just limiting things like don't get your hopes up. That's not a good way of manifesting, is it? Because if you're expecting something less than, then you're going to get that. So I would say keep your hopes where you want them and then keep working on other things. Just just have multiple flows of energy and opportunity flowing in. So what I would say is don't put all your eggs in one basket, but keep your hopes high. So if you're going to use old fashioned terms, yeah, you don't want to invest it all in one thing, but still stay invested in the possibility of something happening. And that's how you come out of your shell. And that's how you take a risk. All right, let's see what is winning here. It looks like knowing when to follow instinct by a long shot here. We got 52%. So thank you for um, voting on that. Let's take a look at how and when to follow your instinct for the viewer's choice. Do we get two cards? No, just one. Okay, so we have the two of pentacles. Um, two of pentacles here is saying that one of the two opportunities in front of you is going to just feel a lot better. And there's also just a very simple message from the universe. You can't be everything to everyone. You can't do everything at once. And if you spread yourself too thin, it's sort of like you're just not allowing yourself to truly flourish in one area. So your instinct may be telling you you need to make a choice. This card is affirming that. In order to make the choice, find the thing that brings the most balance and fulfillment to you. The twos here are very similar if we had two of swords and two of pentacles because sometimes we find ourselves torn. So when we can't make a decision with the two of pentacles, we become the two of swords and then what is that stagnation? So choosing anything would be better than nothing because you can always course correct if you need to. And there is a choice here also, instead of letting go, you can bring in assistance. So bringing in assistance would be the three of pentacles. Um, so that would give you the ability to progress, right? So a lot of internal worth, self-worth and questions this month. Uh, but what I saw with all the leadership cards this 
uh, I'm sorry, this week, uh, it's really some great energy. So uh, I feel like you're going to be okay. You just have to sort of like put one's foot in, in front of the other and allow things to start to, um, to progress, right? Okay. So while I'm getting everything stacked up here, I didn't do this earlier, so let me do it now. Uh, if you like what you see here, please consider uh, hitting the subscribe button. This is an absolutely free thing to do. So it sounds like you're signing up for something. You're not, you're just following me if you subscribe. But what you do allow me to do is grow and reach more people when you subscribe, so consider that. Uh, hit the thumbs up once during live, and if you can, comment on the replay, because that gives you a chance to also show engagement, and engagement helps more people discover what I'm doing. So simple and easy, but very powerful. Just clicks, it takes literally like one second. So thank you for all who have done that. I do read the live chat and I saw some people that, um, thank you for doing this, but I guess last night they just opened up the tab and they said they're not getting notifications. So a good way to ensure that you do get reminders um, are to basically um, to sign up on social media. Um, follow me wherever you prefer, uh, because I will put especially on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, I'll put out that day of reminder. And then if you are a Patreon supporter, you get a reminder the day before when there's a poll. So um, that's a great way to connect with me if you'd like to. And then of course, all of the decks that I have today are, I did update the, the link um, to have the two latest at the top. I don't get kickbacks on the Etsy ones. Those just go straight to the authors. If you want to support me, you can click an Amazon link and that'll help me. But everything else, if it's Kickstarter or Etsy, goes to the artist. Um, but thank you for doing that if you'd like to. And then thanks for all the super chats. I'll continue. I'm going to look through the list and find some other ones. These were perfect. It was exactly the kind of deck that I was looking for. And I wouldn't, I get busy and it's hard to kind of look through Amazon. So thank you for everyone who sort of like suggested it. All right, let's get into the special topic, the Celtic Cross. So again, today, this is really helping you get a fresh start um, and clearing out the old karma, clearing out the old cords. So everything that I look at, I'm going to try to see what you can let go of in order, in order to grow a little bit. So let's uh, turn the camera down and take a look at the spread for today. <laughs> That's Alexa. Alexa, be quiet. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, let's take a look now at the spread in front of us. Interesting. Beautiful cards. Again, thank you for this suggestion. I'm so happy to uh, discover some new decks. Interesting. Some changes are going to be necessary to really allow you to get into the growth here. We can already see it. Um, some of you are kind of like moving through a painful situation, but we'll, we'll talk more about that in a second. Okay, so let me just focus on this. <laughs> all right, I am putting the mute button on A-L-E-X-A. -A -A -A. I'm sure all of us have had that situation pop up. Uh, when I talk to some of my friends and family, we'll just call it our friend <laughs> so she doesn't activate. Usually I do that, but today I was in a frenzy as I was getting set up. So I'm glad to insert some humor. <laughs> That's the one area where I think uh, Google and Apple have it better because you have to say like, hey, in front of it. A reminder, if you just joined, what you're watching is uh, going to be valid to everybody, all signs. I just got through the elemental forecast, so you can watch that on replay, but everything else is for everybody. All right. Let me just uh, pour some water here and then let's get into the reading. All right, let's go with your catalyst card here. Wow, there are some changes coming through because we, we actually got a few of these. So I have the storm here and we have the tower and the outcome. So I feel really excited about any of you that have been wanting to see change happen or have been hoping for a big shift in your life, it, buckle your seatbelts. It's, it's happening here. I've been saying that a lot lately, but I definitely feel that energy coming through for you. So 
to me, storms are good, actually. Uh, without them, we would not like a rainstorm. If you don't have something purifying, clarifying, or bringing forth something new, things can't grow. Life can't continue. So sometimes things have to get a little bit messy at the beginning in order for movement to happen. In nature, it's the same sort of thing like when we're going between the seasons. So uh, many of us are already in winter, but when you go through fall, you kind of have to watch all the leaves come down and wind and rain and snow is necessary sometimes for those leaves to fall. So without the wind, that energy of movement change isn't going to happen. So the wind chimes that we saw earlier, we're seeing wind all over the place. So action and communication are definitely a big part of clearing out old karmic energy. I feel like some of you may have also had this big shift in your life. There could have been a breakup, a fight, or this sort of interchange within you. And it's now just like a storm waiting to happen. So we're going to look at how you can effectively move through this change energy. And I'm here to guide you and support you. Looking at the center, Ten of Swords. Super important message with the Ten of Swords. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to um, be able to be in a place where you're supported. With the energy of the Ten of Swords, sometimes we're thrown into situations where there's too much pain, there's too much sort of uh, pressure. And this is kind of like the pressure cooker up here that just needed, to, <laughs> needed that valve to release it. So I feel like what we want to avoid over the course of the next period of time, by the way, this is a timeless reading, this part of it. It doesn't have to just be a week. It's whenever you're deciding to clear your karma or to um, cut the cords in your life. Um, one thing that I would say, though, is if consistently you are finding yourself arguing, if consistently you are finding that you can't make someone happy, then this card is saying there's a new dawn rising. One nice thing with the Ten of Swords is it's never as dark as it may be illustrated. Um, and it's just saying, I'm not going to go there anymore. I'm not going to exchange barbs with this person. I'm not going to accept their negativity. I'm going to focus on the rising sun. I like the card in the Lightseer's deck where she's actually just walking away from all of that. And there's crows above her, but she's sort of like, been there, done that, know that ending, not really happy about that. So for many of you, this is a chance to look at the cyclical energy of relationships and and just patterns in your life and if one person consistently disappoints or if one thing consistently disappoints then you have to kind of reflect and think why am i engaged so much in this and i'm going to start to allow it to just diminish and focus on the rising sun so the first thing is to focus on cycles of pain and disappointment and say to yourself enough is enough um, <laughs> there was an old song in the 70s, no more tears. That's basically what we're going to decide there. Enough is enough. Crossing that, we have the Page of Swords. And this is, again, it's all about the wind, the action, the communication. So we're definitely seeing that as something that can cross this and help you get over this. So feel free to talk to someone else about what you're going through. Very rarely are we on a, a path all on our lonesome. A lot of times, there are many other people out there that can relate and we see all of those little ostensibly the the ravens or the crows up in the, in the distance there that could say yeah i've been through that i'm there to support you also put your time and energy into something productive it's so important for sometimes in the light or in that sort of in the wake of this energy where someone's saying all of this stuff you can lead by example and just show them hey it doesn't have to be this way um, and so lead by example put your time and energy into something that's better uh, suited and more deserving of what you have to offer, right? Let's look at what's led you to this point. Sometimes it's as simple as you didn't get to choose. Six of Cups is family. It's blood. It can also be a best friend in your life as well. But a lot of times it's sister, brother, cousin, uh, mother, father, whatever. It's just sort of like energy that you couldn't escape if you wanted to. So we don't get to choose our family, but we do get to choose our friends. So Put your time and energy into that chosen family or into some of your friendships more. And maybe in the past, you know, there, there is a lot of relationship sort of energy coming through at the beginning. So I'll just go with it um, but because it feels appropriate for this period right now. So I'll just read it. <laughs> it feels like some of you are just needing to release something that once was something good, but may you, you, we grow, we change over time, right? People can get hardened by life experiences. They can get frustrated by jealousy. Uh, a lot of times 
people just don't mature on the same levels, right? So as we look at these cards here, I can see maybe like a disagreement. And for many of you, um, I want you to focus on finding a new sort of connection and also having some fun. The cool energy of the Six of Cups is it's playful, it's irreverent, and it really is trying to focus more on friendship than fighting or something like that. So find people and opportunities in your life that allow for that to happen. And speaking of friends, we have a furry little friend here. Polly, you want to say hi? That's been tiptoeing around me. <laughs> so one of the things that you can um, rely on a little bit during this period of time is your pets, um, your close friends, other activities in your life that bring you a sense of love and joy. Uh, and not accidental that this little guy came through at this point. So um, one thing that might also be happening for you, we're talking about things to clear. Okay, good boy. Um, things to clear. Some of you may be looking at your sibling relationships, your cousin relationships, or your parent and child relationships, again, the core ones. And you're going to decide here that although it's nice to have all of these connections in your life, you don't need them for each and every level of like success. Like there are points where if someone is consistently not being there for you, it may be in your best interest to sort of spend time on your own to just sort of like take a break. So find yourself. Sometimes we get so caught up in someone else that we lose ourselves. So I feel like this is a rediscovery of what's coming on. All right. So let's go ahead now. Look back at the, the next card here. We have the nine of wands here. Um, the nine of wands card is actually really nice here. It shows me that if you put your energy into something else, you're going to see progress. Uh, with the nine of wands, just like I was talking about getting lost in the shuffle before, you could definitely find yourself being lost in the shuffle with this. So one thing that I'd like some of you to do is finish what you started. And with this card, that means like, again, having written a book before I've been there, or maybe it's a, a house that you've started to build, etc. Uh, what it, wherever you're at, it could just be so much easier sometimes to just say like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm over it. I need a break. Um, and so this is saying, no, don't let that get overwhelming to you. focus instead on what you can do. And, and that's going to, um, to help you out here. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, hire someone to help. If it's a project, if you're feeling like you need an external point of, 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 of view, then, then ask someone for a little bit of advice. All of that is going to help you out. Uh, and then just keep pushing. Okay. Uh, one thing that I'd like you to pay attention to with this is if you are feeling emotionally overwhelmed or if there's migraines or headaches, absolutely talk to someone. Standard disclaimer applies whenever I look at health stuff here, which is basically, I'm not a doctor. Talk to a doctor if you need one. Um, but that being said, you may be feeling this sense of, I just can't do it. It could be a panic attack. It could be a headache. It could just be uh, procrastination. So one of the things that can cause procrastination is the Ten of Swords, a fear of failure. So one of the things that you have to remind yourself is that if you don't try, you do fail. If you try, you're actually setting yourself up for success, even if it takes a few attempts. So procrastination and a lack of an, of an attempt is a surefire way to fulfill the fear. So try, do, continue. It, that, that's the only way to kind of move on. Anything that you want to push forward, you're going to see a return on the investment with the nine of wands as well. Sometimes it just feels like it's overwhelming. So focusing on not being overwhelmed is going to be essential to that. Okay, let's go to your crowning position here. We've got the hermit card and uh, the hermit coming through again. This was our message for today. And now it's the sort of timeless message here, which is understanding that you have always held the light. You've always held that next step in that key. And I love that you can actually very clearly, if I pull it close, now we can see the star. There you see the six-pointed star in the center, right? So all of this sort of exploration and discovery that is a part of the hermit is to find the star. So you are ready. The time is now. You just have to sort of like step into that, right? So karmically, let's talk about why the hermit could be coming through for some of you. Karmically, this is coming through because some of you have been taught that it's more correct, it's more acceptable to let other people shine. This could be a family or a cultural thing where it's more about the group, it's more about the team. You do have a moment though, you do have something in your life where you're being called to step into that spotlight and every soul has a, a sort of moment when it's supposed to shine. So if it's your moment, it's your moment. Don't, um, don't hold back just because other people are uncomfortable with your light. You should never have to mute your light like that anyway, okay? 
So karmically, I think that's the sort of opportunity is to know and to see your power. And if you just joined, yes, this is for everybody present. We're going to be looking at a timeless reading here to help you through clearing karma and clearing um, any of the old sort of cords that are holding you back in your life. So that's why I was talking about some of that here, where there could be family or cultural sort of cords that are kind of anchoring you in place, which you don't need to, to sort of like focus on anymore. In the near future, we have another emperor card reversed. Um, so with the emperor in reverse, this is about realizing that, again, you have the ability to control and to set into motion whatever it is that you want. There could be a paternal energy in your life or a boss or some sort of an authority figure that is standing in that gateway like we see with this between you and what you want. Maybe even telling you this is what you should do. Um, and maybe they hold the power, which could be money, a signature, final decision, etc. The encouragement with this is to not lose your, not, not lose what makes you true to you. Um, what's the word that I'm looking for here? Basically sticking to your standards and morals, I would say. Uh, and so if, if something is coming through where they're asking you to change too much and it doesn't feel authentic, that's, that's a, a big red warning sign for you there. You always want to make sure that you're, you're sticking to what makes you, you. If you've ever listened to a musical artist and their music gets overproduced, you miss hearing the core things, whether it's the sound of some of the instruments in the band or their voice. Overproduction, overmanagement, uh, too much oversight gets in the way of what's authentic. So you take the cord, uh, the, uh, the cords, you take the reins back and really sort of like cut that cord uh, and really step into your power. That's a big opportunity here. And it, it probably is a parental, we're looking at children and parents here with these two cards, the six of cups and the, uh, the emperor. So it feels like you're going to really reclaim some of the power that you might have lost in the past. And you don't have to really argue about it anymore. The Ten of Swords reverse is, is really saying, I don't owe anyone an explanation at a certain point. Uh, I just need to move forward and I'm going to use that energy in a better place. Because no matter how hard you try, there's always going to be someone in your life that thinks they know better than you, that has some sort of a a negative comment. <laughs> if you're in social media, you see this. There's always one person that just says something silly. So you learn to tune it out. And in real life, we learn to tune it out too. And uh, I think that's going to be very, very key to emotional uh, and I would say physical health as well. And then just success in general. You're never going to be able to please everyone all the time. There may be rare instances where there's a consensus, but it's, it's hard to kind of keep that consensus uh, all the time. So what is it? You can uh, make people, some of the people happy some of the time, all the people some of the time, but not all the people all the time. And sometimes it's none of the people. So you're just going to have to kind of like go with the flow. All right. We're looking here at how you're showing up and it's pretty strong. We have the Knight of Swords here, and this is showing your heart, your soul, your ego. And you got a lot to do uh, and, and you got some time to make up for, basically. So what I see here is the ability to see some rapid movement happen in your life. And also... Um, I love the sort of progression that we're seeing here, maturation. We're looking at the soul here. So this is you thinking, wait, who, me? Is it me that this is all about? Uh, do I deserve this? And this one is saying, not only do I believe that it's me, but I'm going full force, full throttle back to what I was talking about in my slides earlier when I was channeling messages. So remembering the caution of revving the engines up. We want to stay in the positive energy of the Nine of Cups, not to have it go topsy-turvy. So just keep the positive movement going. Be excited, be passionate, and other people are going to see exactly that energy with you. Okay? We have a wistful and wishing Three of Wands here in the environment. She's uh, feeling very detached from it. It looks to me more like the Two of Wands. Um, really a lot more like the Two of Wands because I would expect someone to be kind of looking at their table, looking at a globe, being separated from it. So as we take a look at everything that's been set up here, there's a big change on the horizon. Based on what we're seeing here, it's a big positive change. Why? Because the tower is reversed, which means that you have a say in this, and also because it's being tempered by all the positive cards that precede it. So if you have change that's on the precipice, why not get a little bit more active with it? Why not take some more control? Why not get out there and either be in the water like we saw with the other deck or 
make a decision to at least get to the shore. Um, normally, you would see someone stepping out there. So in lay terms, what I'm really saying is don't wait for something. Um, get the action started. Um, sorry, I'm pulling out the wrong deck here. Um, so I just want to see if I can find that other one because it was a really nice sort of um, alternate version of it because I think so often we're focusing on waiting for it to happen and this one was meeting it and I think it's really powerful if I can find it. <laughs> if not, you remember what I pulled up here. So it looks like it's hidden in here somewhere. But anyway, I would say getting yourself out there. Here we go, three of wands. So focusing on what we're seeing here, which is I'll pull it up to the camera because this one's a little bit darker. So um, saying that I'm going to go out there and meet my destiny. I'm not going to wait for it to come knocking. I'm not going to give up if I don't hear a knock the first time. And so I like the planning that's a part of this particular one, but it does feel to me like there's a little bit of overthinking and you have to get out and explore and, and, and try something. Okay. So it's waiting. It's there, but there is a block between you and what's ready for you. Some of that has come because of family, because of an arbitrary decision maker, a boss or someone that's going to have some red tape decision making ability. But for the rest of you, there's a, almost like a glass ceiling that you've put on there. So don't limit yourself. Push through the glass. OK, I think that is so important. OK, why is all of this important? Because you're being led towards this change, but it's work. I mentioned earlier that the mountain doesn't pop up overnight. Uh, we can all attest to that. You don't just walk out to, you know, this afternoon and see a mountain like in your front yard. It takes time for continents to drift. It takes time for mountains to be built. It takes time for them to erode away. So it also takes some work. And sometimes we don't want to do the work. And when I'm looking at hope, fear and opportunities, um, fears and opportunities, rather, I'm seeing that some of us are afraid of the work. Some of us may be afraid of competition. Um, I like the dog in the background here. <laughs> Sorry. He's kind of in his own world. Look at this dog. Hey, look at me. I'm having fun. The rest of them are fighting. And he's like, I'm going to take this wand and go and do something fun. So sometimes don't pay attention to all of this. It's almost like posturing and posing and, and sort of like people trying to show off. While other people are showing off, you're going to get stuff done. You're the happy dog in the background. Um, <laughs> that is able to avoid all of it. What a clever uh, illustration. So these two are fighting over the same thing, even though he's got one already. This one is just being mean. And the one in the background is like, I'm going to avoid all of this and I'm going to do my own thing. So stay focused, collaborate, don't necessarily compete. And if you are competing, it should be friendly competition because sometimes competition wastes time. And that's what we saw with this particular set of illustrations. All right, let's um, just pull this card up here, the final card. I like that it's a lighthouse. What a cool illustration. Not many decks have this as a lighthouse. Um, so the tower is reversed, but it's actually exposing the light within, if we're going to go with a metaphor here, which I will. Many of you have spent maybe your lifetime or a large portion of your lifetime being the lighthouse for others, constantly listening, constantly helping them. This is especially true if you have a profession like medicine or uh, psychiatry or teaching or uh, being a registered nurse, any number of these or a nonprofit, your whole life's energy is in helping others. Even people that are working um, like in service jobs, I should say, especially not even because you're serving the public, you're helping the public. So a big portion of what you do is help others to be happy, to be fulfilled. So karmically, the big lesson for you and also kind of like when we're looking at all the chords here is that you also need to make sure that you're okay too. And I want you to do something amazing with that light that you have within. So we have two cards of hidden light, the hermit, where we see the, the star hidden there in the corner. And then we have the lighthouse, which is now just shining out like a beacon here. So do something amazing with your light. Also, there is a surrender that happens with the, the tower card, which is you can see stuff coming. You wouldn't be showing up here if you weren't already tuned in a little bit. Um, so you can see things coming through your own clairvoyance, your instincts, etc. But you can't force other people to see it. So karmically speaking, this is about knowing when to get out of something. And if we look at these two together, the heart of the spread and the outcome, this is choosing to release the cycle of fear of failure, of arguing or having to accept other people's pain. 
You don't have to accept that all the time. You also are capable of shining. You're capable of rebuilding. You're capable of working hard and over, actually kind of avoiding all this nonsense. You're uh, capable of really making a lot of progress. Sometimes you play the spectator when you shouldn't, but you're gonna, this particular period in your life, you're gonna step outside and meet change as it happens, as we saw with the other card here that I left on the bottom. And so you're gonna actually go out there and without fear, um, you're just going to meet this opportunity, right? So I feel really good about that. I feel like a lot of what was holding you back was the fear of movement, the fear of success. For some of you, again, it could be a family member that put their foot down and said, not here, not now, not ever. And you're no longer that little kid. You're actually an equal. You're an adult now. You can do what you want to do. And you've earned that right. And there is a, there's a lyric from Sade where she says like something about a quiet storm, right? So I like that line, um, sweetest taboo, I think it is, but it's a quiet storm. You're like that quiet storm and people, when they least expect it, are going to see your power and see your light. And you're going to have a really productive sort of next phase of your journey. Let's go ahead and expand the forecast here. I look at it a little differently when I expand it here in a special reading like this. We're going to be measuring each uh, with the sort of question of what can I clear and what karmically is causing this to happen, okay? So we're going to start with, um, with health first. So your message around health here is, look at that fire, the fire within. Um, so this to me is both a combination of like the Empress and the Queen of, Sword, or Queen of, um, sorry, Queen of Wands because I'm seeing that fiery energy coming through and I'm also seeing the divine feminine. So this is what's healthy for you, which is I have the power to do this. I have the capacity, the, I have the follow through to do this. I also have the divine right to step forward in my power and in my passion. And this is connecting us with the first thing that I really was seeing, which was that fiery energy. Uh, like, well, I'm seeing the color red on this one. So it's really going to be the first chakra. But to be really powerful, we need all three of those, those lower chakras lit up. And they would all have those colors of red, orange, and yellow. So really focusing on feeling secure, feeling stable, and feeling like you have the power to create, to finish, to embark upon things. Your divine feminine energy is coming through for health. Okay? So uh, it's healthy and it's normal for you to want to be able to do what you want to do. Okay? That's just part of, of being an independent and self-sufficient adult. So that's definitely coming through here. Let's kind of take a quick look at this again with the standard disclaimer that I put up earlier and just see if there's anything in your uh, mind, body or spirit that you need to be focusing on to be more well balanced. So with the Ten of Swords smack dab in the center, I feel like many of you are at a point where you need to walk away and um, and and release any sort of mental anguish or or sort of again, it could be if people are constantly picking at you or fighting with you, this is saying like, that is not sustainable. I, I can't be happy if this is going on. So environmentally walking away from the Ten of Swords. This can also be pain that you have compartmentalized in your body. So maybe now you have neck, back, or even like migraine type pain because of the, the sort of emotional stuff that's been going on. So deciding to stop this, to take some action, and kind of clear that out as key. Again, a lot with the head, a lot with the back here with the nine of wands and with the 10 of swords energy. So focusing on clearing those sort of parts of your body out will be very important. Um, what I see here is in the environment is anything you decide to put energy into, you're going to see a very positive return on it with the 10 of wands. I'm sorry, with the three of wands here. So it's just a time to make some changes happen. Okay. So Commit to those changes, and I think you're going to be in a good space. I do see very sedentary energy with the Emperor and the Three of Wands, so move, movement is key, reminding you earlier that you know the power of, of air, the element of air, is really permeating this particular reading. Speaking and acting is going to be important when it comes to your health. And uh, not waiting for this. This is in the future. Uh, it's reversed, so you have a lot of power over this tower. So deciding to take an active role in it and... Um, so it doesn't catch you unaware, like the two people there, um, making sure that you, you are changing things forward in the way that you want to. I completely forgot that I was wearing mountains today. <laughs> that totally ties in with the mountain message that we had earlier. Um, so really focusing on 
keeping your eye on the journey and not getting distracted like I was there is going to be important too. Okay, so that's the main messages that came through for health. Um, we're going to move along to wealth now. Oh, one last thing for health. Um, five of Wands is really good for gently working out the body. You could do things like um, mat-based activities, push-ups, sit-ups, yoga. Um, and again, standard disclaimer with all of the health messages, talk to a doctor before you make any changes, of course. All right, let's move along to the wealth card here. So we have courage, finding inner strength to find fear, um, to face the fear with confidence. This one is so important. It is the absolute solution to the five of pentacles that I was channeling earlier. So if you believe in yourself and have this sort of inner confidence and inner strength, that is, that is the skeleton key that opens up the door. So I really want you to focus on building courage. Maybe you need some help. Maybe you need some people around you like training wheels at the beginning to kind of give you the, the support, the nudge that you need to step into something or to say something or communicate something. Once you do that though, I feel like it's going to be a self sort of self-fulfilling and also kind of like this momentum thing that you've built up that, that just starts to self-perpetuating is the word I was looking for. Uh, that's going to help you out, right? Okay. So let's take a look at all of the cards here and see if there's some messages for work and money and life purpose. It is time for a change. I think you know this. <laughs> the storm, the ten of swords, and the tower. So it feels to me like at the very least there's room for some significant movement change um, or maybe just some long-term goals. You're, 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 you're sort of shifting your direction a bit here with this. And you know what to do, but it's more a matter of like how do I communicate this? So. If you're in a toxic relationship, a toxic job, or a toxic environment, you take the steps to get out of it. You're going to be the one that's Googling and finding out where to move or where to work or whatever. So active participant in changing the outcome here. And it does feel like for some of you, you need a chance to be able to say what you want to do rather than constantly be told what to do. You may not like being bossed around. And for those of you that are ready for an entrepreneurial job, it does take work, but it is worth it and it is fulfilling in the long run. And then we see in the environment a lot of receptive energy with the three of wands here. So when you decide to make the change, the change comes through. You have uh, strong connections here that you can lean on if you're looking for opportunities to be opened up. So I would say open up to that. If you're retired, a move may be on the horizon. Or if you're even if you're working, this can actually just be a physical move. So uh, make sure that you take care of yourself. And, uh, and if you're ready to move, move. One thing that I meant to say with health, this can also show a loss of balance. The balance can be figurative or literal, so watch out in balance. When you're finding a new house, um, looking more back at wealth, please take a look at your roof and take a look at the foundation. Um, the tower card's not necessarily something I want to see uh, when you're purchasing a house. If you've already purchased it, don't freak out. But if it's something that you're looking for, if you're in the searching process, um, just take a look at that. I would say even if you're a house owner or renting, if you're noticing cracks in the ceiling or leaks, take care of them before they get worse. That's all. The tower's in the future. It's not happening right now. All right. That is everything going on with wealth. But I do see with the Emperor card the ability to step into something more powerful. So if you are looking for a new job, you could get um, not just a raise, but maybe like a promotion, a, a title higher. All right. So looking now at your love and relationships. We have the Buffalo spirit. It says the abundant universe will, will provide. This card was reversed though. So I look at buffaloes um, and bulls having the same sort of stubborn energy. Uh, but I would say with this, to not be afraid. We see a really, really strong energy with this. So let's take a look at the cards and read it in three different ways. And this is going to be really important because I feel like a lot of today has to do with karmic relationships, even though I'm not traditionally a relationship reader. That's just the energy that seems to be coming through. So I'm going to look at it for those of you in a relationship or focusing on a key connection with someone, then those that are looking for a relationship and those that are single. All right. So focusing first on the most important relationship to you. So it doesn't have to just be love. This could be your brother, sister, cousin, mother, father, aunt, uncle, etc., etc. So the key thing going on right now, I feel like it is a breakdown in communication. Ten of Swords smack dab in the center is saying, we're just not talking the way we used to. If, you, if the communication's open, one person may be holding more of the pain than they normally would. They feel like they can't talk. So the, the thing that you're going to be offering here with the crossing card is an open ear an opportunity. You're holding some space. Okay. 
So communication and you opening up that communication is key. Remembering what I said earlier, if someone consistently gives you the silent treatment, which can be the hermit, by the way, then they may not have the capacity to deal with whatever it is in their life or in your life, or they may not have the interest. And in that case, the foundation is not strong enough because without the openness of these two communication cards, then the storm comes and goes and the foundation breaks and you move on to something better. So for some of you, it's, I feel like the do or die moment is, can we talk? Can we listen? Can we communicate? There's also a lot of planning that needs to happen for some of you planning for the future. And it feels like there's a little bit of inequity in how much energy is being put into that future planning. I see one person holding the mantle here and doing the lion's share of the work. So make sure that you are participating in future planning. And I never think it's wise to let one person do all of the, all of the sort of legal or financial stuff that sets you up for an uncertain future as well. So communicate, be cooperative, be co-leading this together and um, definitely plan something cool in the future as well. I think you can get through it, but I think that changes are necessary. This is a growth period for relationships, and it's a revelation period where you're seeing parts of your partner that you didn't see before, et cetera, okay? But focusing on the deep past, we have this beautiful Six of Cups saying, hey, we really did work to, to make this happen. This, there is something that's, that's worth this sort of journey. So there you go, okay. Let's go ahead now and shift it to the next piece, which is going to be for those of you that are looking for something special. It could be a job, it could be a relationship, but you're, you're going to find this in a person. So looking for some sort of a key relationship. The biggest thing now, the Ten of Swords takes on a different light. It's the fear of rejection. Some of you may have just been burned and you're thinking to yourself, I can't do this again. Well, I would remind you that there's always a, a beautiful sunrise there at the bottom, or sorry, in the distance rather. And we want to focus on that, that future sunrise. And also reminding you that unless you try, then you're, you're never going to know what's possible. It's kind of like a guaranteed failure. So that's going to be important for, for many of you. Um, coming out of your shell and being who you are, I think this is so important. And this is the big sort of like soul and karmic opportunity. If you keep it a, a secret, if you don't let people see who you are, then how are they going to be able to fall in love with you and, and know who, what you have to offer? So part of this is saying like, I need to come out of my shell. I need to, it's hard for someone to find me at home unless you're on social media all the time or something like that. You, you kind of need to get out into the world. So this is just coming out of your shell. This is also about not putting any sort of unnecessary caps on what's possible, including happiness. This is expecting some positive changes on the horizon. I see you calling in an older partnership here, the emperor card. The one karmic lesson here, even when we look at the, the two partners here, um, I see one that has a little bit more experience or a little bit more confidence. So focusing on the courage and the confidence here and uh, reminding yourself that you're not necessarily looking for a mom or a dad. You're looking for someone to be there and to partner with you because right now there is a little bit of paternal or maternal energy either emanating from your side or their side. So as you step into something new, really make sure that it's a true partnership. Okay. Finally, for those of you that are single and happy, uh, potential move on the horizon, potential new job, a chance to work smarter. Uh, I feel like if you put a little bit more energy and work into something, you're going to see things happen really quickly um, because you, you add one to either of this, 10 of wands, moving on to the next thing, four of wands, the partner's already coming in. Um, so it feels like a lot of forward momentum. All it takes is a step in the right direction from you. So whether or not you're looking for someone, I see a good teacher or mentor uh, in your horizon. But the thing here with this, or even in your environment almost, the only thing that I see with this is that you part of your journey is to remember when and if to kind of take guidance from that person because I do feel you're you're right at that precipice of being able to do this on your own okay let's move on to your destiny card and then I'll pull a, um, a big idea so it's the prophet it's the high priestess she was reversed but she's a powerful card no matter how she comes through so the reversal of a prophet or a high priestess card is saying I know what to do why am I not listening to myself why am I putting all that power and energy into other people? And I would say that's a good question. Also, even when we're proven time and again, that, like we have the capacity to see and to understand and to know, sometimes we have a hard time listening to it. So trust in your higher guidance. 
opening up the, the crown chakra is going to be really important. Uh, if I have time, I'll look at, maybe I'll pull one for each, but I feel like we got some of this already. Let me do a big idea. Uh, I'm going to kind of combine all the, 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 the different chakras together. And I'm going to say, what can we do to open and balance your chakras? And I feel like that's a good sort of big idea, which will help you because it was one of the messages that came through for me in dreams last night. So let's, let's tie all of these together and see what that particular message is for you. <laughs> I'm laughing because I see someone saying happy unconditional love day. I agree much. It's a mouthful. We would, we would think of something better there. All right, back to the topic, which is, um, focusing on balancing your chakras. So it, it actually came through when I was channeling earlier, it's the nine of cups. So with this particular card, finding the passion, working the passion and staying in that positive energy. Uh, it's really going to help you out. So if you're not working your passion, by the way, find a way to put more of what makes you happy in your life. We don't all get the luxury of being able to have a job that, you know, is filling up our heart with love and light. But I want you to make sure that there's enough of that in your life that it balances out. And eventually it, it may be something that takes time. Like I've been doing what I'm doing here for seven years. The channel has been around since 2013, but 2015 is when I started doing this. And it was right when I quit my job. It took a long time to build up and, and be where I'm at. So all of those vases in the background indicate all the work that this little guy has done here, creating and crafting. So when you work your passion, it can take a long time. Doing the book took me 10 years and like certain things in your life, they don't happen lickety split. And I think so much of what we've got right now is instantaneous. Um, like if, even if I just think back, I was talking to my mom the other day about like how far the internet has progressed. When I was a kid, you still had to look stuff up on like, you had to go to the library and there was microfilm, microfiche. There would be DVDs and CD-ROMs, but the internet wasn't yet a connected. Like there was no Wikipedia. It really hadn't developed to the degree that it had. So we kind of like have a free resource for us right now. You couldn't just Google something. Google hadn't even been created. So there was some stuff where it's like, we've come so far and now we're used to just going and hitting it or like shazamming something if you don't know the song. As a kid, I'd have to go and ask my friends, what song is this? And you'd do la 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 la, you'd have to hum it. Like we didn't have the access that we do now. So you understood at that time that it would take a little bit more time to build things up. So be patient with yourself and be passionate about what you're doing and finding your way to working your passion could be a journey that takes a few years or a decade. And that's the fun part. That's the climbing of the, the mountain, which I won't forget that I'm wearing right now. <laughs> so yeah, it's climbing the mountains. And as you can see with this mountain range, there are peaks and valleys. It's not all the same. So sometimes they're going to have a really high high. Sometimes it's going to be here. You're just going to keep doing that. All right. And that's the big idea. Passion and perseverance. Perseverance. It takes time to get to that pinnacle of the nine of cups. Yes, card catalogs. People don't, the Dewey Decimal System, all that fun stuff. You don't have to, I don't think kids have to learn it anymore, um, but God bless them if they do. <laughs> all right, so let's take a look at where we're at right now on today's reading. We just worked through the special topic and uh, we're gonna get ready for the meditation and the final card for today. So before we do that, um, write down if you have a question for me. I'm not gonna take the question per se, but I'm going to ask you all to meditate on it and then I'll pull a card that will answer it. So um, go ahead now and get that into your headspace or write it down. While we're doing that, just one last time, a reminder to join me on social media if you can. A reminder that on all social media platforms, um, know that I'm never going to invite you to something or add you or try to talk to you. This is how we talk together on either a YouTube or an Instagram Live or a TikTok Live. Uh, or Facebook Live, but you'll see my, my mouth moving, <laughs> and I'll usually announce it on social media. There are some imposters out there that will change the spelling of my name and everything, so um, you can go to my website, and you can make sure that it's actually me, and I think I pinned that link earlier. Again, a really quick and easy way to show support is if you're a longtime viewer, or if you liked what you saw and you're brand new, just hit the subscribe button. Once in a lifetime is all I ask on that, and then hit the thumbs up once per video. And then on replay, you can actually show a little bit of love and support by commenting. Super stickers and super chats are always welcome. There's also super thanks, which is something that you can do if you watch this on replay. It's right near the share icon. 
And that, my friends, is everything. So let's get set up for the meditation. While we're doing this, again, stick around. This only takes um, a couple of minutes to, to meditate, and you will have a chance to get some, uh, something answered, something you've been sort of sitting on for a while. All right, so uh, first things first, I'm going to give you a chance to vote on which instrument you'd like me to play. So which instrument? Um, I can play a singing bowl or a crystal pyramid. Okay, so for today's uh, meditation, I think what would be really great is to work with the energy of a mountain, since it played a pivotal part in the channel message. I'm wearing it. <laughs> I feel like it's a really good energy for us to look at. So close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Let go of any tension that you might be holding on to in your body. And in this moment in time, I want you to focus on uh, imagining that you are at the top of a mountain, looking out at the horizon. As you look over your shoulder, I want you to uh, remind yourself of the things that made the journey maybe a little bit more difficult. If there were people, places, or things that you're grateful to have gone through and experienced, but you don't want to have in the next leg of the journey, we're going to take a moment now to bless and release those karmic connections to you. So we'll start with a release of family karmic energy. Um, and we can also do this not just through this lifetime, but all. Close your eyes and see the sort of line of ancestors and also the Ten of Pentacles, your, your actual family around you. And I want you to bow down in reverence to them and say, thank you so much for giving me what you gave me um, in the form of life and resources and experiences. Not everything has been what I've wanted it to be, however. I'm at a point in this journey now where I'm willing and ready to walk on my own to spread my wings. And when and if I need to connect with you, I will. But I release the lessons of the past, the pain from the past, and the disappointment from the past. I'll remember the good and the not so good, and I'm fully ready to take the mantle of responsibility moving forward. And you can see each of them bowing to you, and you see an energetic cord dissolving between each of you and each of your ancestors as well. You've cleared the karmic energy from all lifetimes. Breathe in and feel a lightness of being as you're doing this. You're not defined by the mistakes of your parents, your, your siblings, your cousins, your, li your lifetime in the past, your, your other ancestors. It, it, what was, was. It isn't what is and it is not what will be. That was just a moment in time. There's no need to hold on to it so tightly anymore. Let the reins go. Let that part of you go. Look at experiences, heartbreak, upsets. Let all of that go as well. Focus now on what's left, which is the light, which is a lightness of being. And maybe there are two or three energies or people or experiences around you that lift you up. Imagine that they do so much of that lifting up that you're actually kind of levitating. And as you levitate up over the hill, you can actually spread your figurative wings. I'd like you just to glide and enjoy where you're being led next. For each of you, that's going to be a different vision, and it's one that I don't need to guide you on. You're going to allow your own imagination, your own guides, your own sort of heart bring you to that next destination. So while you enjoy going to where you're supposed to be going, I'm going to play the crystal pyramid. So just relax and receive, and in about a minute's time, I'll come back and help you answer your final question.
take a few deep breaths. Allow yourself to land on wherever that horizon is, whatever that destiny was that we saw with the Three of Wands. See more ships, more opportunities coming your way. And think to yourself, I'm ready to receive love, abundance, opportunity in the highest forms. I'm an active creator, an active participant in this, and I am deserving of these beautiful uh, opportunities that are coming through. Gently open your eyes when you're ready. And let's get into the final card. I'm going to go back to the original deck here that we were using because I really like this one. Focus on a single question that you have in your head. If you don't have one, just open it up to whatever the universe wants to bring through. You don't have to have one if you don't. So I got the Hermit card again. I'm going to pull one more on top of this just because we're using the same deck and I did shuffle it. Okay, good. Nine of Pentacles again. Similar messages here, um, even though I shuffled it pretty good. So we're going to look at these really quick. And I, what I'll do is um, see if there's one more wild card and I'll, I'll use a different deck here. So same messages that we had before, which is to, uh, as a yes, no, it's a yes. And one of the important things here is to invite in that extra feedback. I feel like for some of you, you are... Um, wanting to keep something really close to yourself. You're really wanting to hold on to something near and dear. So let's just clarify one more time using this deck to make sure that there's no repeats. And I'll say, is there anything that we need to do to help someone pass those messages that we received already? Queen of Pentacles. Okay, same sort of thing. It is about holding on to something that you don't need to hold on to anymore. What a cute uh, little, <laughs> what is that? A little, it looks like a, a little doe or something there in the background. Um, it's not quite a rabbit, but anyway, very cute. Um, so with this particular Queen of Pentacles, I would say it's important for you to be ready and willing to release something that you've been holding on to because there does come a point where you miss a window of opportunity. So what we saw with this, we're going to combine the three because it's going to be past, present, and future. So in the past, we have the desire to want to explore, discover, and learn. Um, then we saw that you've reached this sort of level of accomplishment and independence on your own. And the final card, the true final card is saying that it is ready, it is time to let it go. But for some of us, there's a fear of judgment and a fear of acceptance once we let something go. So it's a yes, this is definitely a yes card, but there is for some reason a continued fear of advancement or fear of judgment or fear of letting go. So I would say don't, um, don't fear that. The other thing that I would say with this particular card is to focus on ownership. So if you if you do have to sort of like let something out there into the world, maybe you can make sure that you get uh, a piece of the pie, a piece of the cake, a little bit of the um, energy of that. So maybe you're going to release something on your own, like whether you're a musician or a writer or something like that. Um, maybe you're going to make sure that uh, when you negotiate for the next job that there's a higher title, something like that. That's about all I would say with this. It's very positive overall. Knowing when to let Go, knowing when to step in, that's all part of this as well. But you have very positive energy here, and it does look like we've overcome most of the karmic blocks, but there is still a little bit of maternal energy that might be coming through for some of you. So take care of yourself, okay? Time frames are up to you. Someone asked about the time frames. All of my readings, particularly the timeless ones, are about six to eight weeks. Uh, the rest of the time frame at the beginning is one week, but this timeless portion would be when you're ready. Um, it, a lot of this is emotional, a lot of it's cognitive, so it depends on internal readiness. But uh, if it's taking more than a month and a half to manifest, I would say you have to kind of look at some of the core stuff that we talked about because it does feel like everything should be moving along in that period of time. Okay, so I'd like to wrap up now because we're just about at time. So uh, first of all, I, wa I want to say thanks to all of you that showed up, whether it's your first time or you've been here for a while, I appreciate it. I, like I said, I've been doing this for about seven years. And so I know some of you have been with me since 2015 or before when I was just sporadically doing it. So thanks for that part of that, the journey. Special thanks to everybody, whether you're a Patreon supporter or a channel member, um, that actually helps a lot. There, people have asked me like, what's the difference between the two? Um, you get a few more perks on YouTube, but it supports me in the same way. So whatever's easiest for you is what I would say is fine. Um, but I see it here a little bit easier. So that's, that's the main difference. But thank you to all of those supporters. And if you're brand new, 
Um, I hope you, you stick around. Like I said, I'll be doing some additional readings this week. I think it's uh, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio is coming up, but you can check my website for information. And uh, now I'd like to just say thanks to anybody that's a brand new channel member or who was kind enough to give back today. So give me just a second to pull up the tab here and we'll look through that. All right, so for today, let's look at the new members first. Looks like we have a couple of new ones. So starting off with Joy 2018, brand new member. Thank you for being a part of this community. I appreciate it. Um, and I think, let's see, everyone else I've welcomed because they were from two days ago. So um, except there's a couple at the beginning, I'm not sure. So I'll just, I'll mention the ones from two days ago. Um, so also thank you to Pamela Frisbee, Gia Nes Nescio, I think it is, Corey Stewart, Yuri, Yuri Gonzalez, and all of those were uh, from the past day or two. All right, now for anyone who gave back with a super sticker or super chat, give me just a second here and we will say um, some gratitude. Uh, and also thank you for, for giving back a little bit. That'll help me when I go shopping for some cards this week. So um, Isha Marie, thank you for kicking things off today. I appreciate that. AB, thank you as well. Shelly Chubb, thank you very much for the $28. I appreciate that. Um, April Golowick, Aaron Lovely, I think it is. Um, Crystal Franco, thank you for uh, your kind feedback there as well. I appreciate that. Charlene Fox, Jean S. Let's see, Crystal Frankel again. Thank you. Uh, I, I see you did a few in rapid su succession, so thank you for the repeated one so I don't say the name again and again. Um, Adele Brisky. Let's see, Tanya S. Light for Love. Ashley Mayfield. Uh, let's see, Crystal again. Thank you for all the repeated ones. Adrian uh, Wagner. Appreciate that, or Wagner. Um, Marsh... Marshawn Anderson, let's see, Mahima Lalit, I think it is, thank you, uh, Wendy Wright, appreciate the lucky number 22, appreciate it, Gina Gonzalez, uh, ML Champion, Kila or Kyla G, uh, Crystal again, Kathy Aram, Crystal McKnight, let's see, Kathless L, Raquel uh, Ramirez, Yvonne M, Ashley Mayfield again, thank you, Wendy Wright again, thank you, Catalina uh, Villanueva, Ashley Mayfield again, thank you. Uh, Marina, I'm sorry, Maria uh, Fazari, thank you so much. Elisa A, Kimberly Schultz, April Rain, Catholic again, thank you so much for the people that did repeated ones. I'm seeing it. I'm, I may not say each contribution each time, but I'm seeing the repeated ones and I appreciate that. Um, Wendy's Workshop Web, Marissa, Kim Coffee, let's see, Simone Muller, or Muller rather. Yvette Sanchez, Melissa P., and Jeannie Hart. Thank you so much, everyone, for making this special today. I think Chioko just gave as well. So Chioko B., thank you very much. And Robert, good to see you, buddy. Thank you for the 50. I appreciate that. And I think I got everybody. Um, lots of love and light. I hope you guys enjoyed today's reading. And I look forward to kicking off the readings again tomorrow for the next week and possibly doing an impromptu about um, maybe it's about self-confidence, not just, or self-love, something like that, rather than all of the energy that's going to be on relationships this week. So more to come. I did do um, an impromptu recently on relationships and it was not as popular as some of the other ones. So it's clear that you guys like me to focus on higher levels of, of love if I'm going to do it. So thanks for the feedback. All right. Um, special thanks to both Dakota and Maria for helping with the moderation today and uh, take care, everyone. Really good to see you. I'll be back again next weekend. And thanks for voting on a really great topic. I appreciate it. All right. Until then, lots of love and light. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.